Well, this is Rick Crandall, and I'm here with Chris Bonington. And we've got a beautiful setting behind us. It's one of our major 14ers in the Rockies in Colorado, Pyramid Peak behind us. That's my passion. That's what I've been doing at my later use, climbing these mountains. Chris, of course, has climbed just about everything in creation that's above a major height, 8,000 meter peaks, the Himalayas, and several times up on several different routes on, on Everest, uh, some being first ascent on very hard routes, the South Face, for example. And I'm wondering what Chris thinks about what's going on right now with uh, 200 or 300 people lined up just below the Hillary Step and towards the summit, stuck. People trying to get down the same rope, people trying to go up, and this is what's happened, it's become a commercial venture. What does that feel like to you, where you were so low on the mountain just with your own team? Or I think, well, firstly, I thank God that when I finally reached the summit of Everest, which was in 1985, with a oh, wonderful Norwegian expedition by the South Col route, the, the route, you know, where all these queues are. But that was the last year that the Nepalese government allowed only one expedition on a route at a time. So that meant the Norwegian Everest Expedition. We were climbing it the traditional way, fixing camps, some fixed rope, and so on. But there were, I think, 10 members of the team. We had 20 Sherpas. We were working with the Sherpas. The Sherpas had, well, by this time, had evolved from being just um, load carriers to also the, the, the best Sherpas and the, had actually become, if you like, Climbers. mountain guides as well. Yeah. But the majority were still just load carriers. Uh, we would go on the 1985 trip. We we were climbing with the Sherpas, but the B when we were pushing the route out, there would always be a couple of us um, climbers, two or three Sherpas as well, working together to fix the rope, which is very different, of course, from what happened once they opened it up. And what happened in 1985, the Nepalese government realised. They were making practically no money whatsoever out of Everest. And they saw, well, now if we had more and more people going on Everest, um, we're going to make more money. And so that's what they did. And so they opened it out. I think uh, you pay $10,000. $11,000 to go on it. And, and rapidly, you therefore had guiding on Everest. And the various commercial guiding companies uh, immediately want to get as many people as they possibly could and very quickly you were getting this situation where you were having about a thousand people at base camp uh, with the kind of the help you know the helpers hangers on and everything else like a small city. And, and then they, they would come to an agreement amongst all the various groups uh, commercial groups on who actually fixed which part of the route and they would fix the entire route that needed fixed ropes through the ice fall and then up the load sea face all the way to the summit. And then they would have their, cl their clients coming in and they would just be using the fixed ropes. And the last thing that the, um, the actual the guiding company wanted was to have clients who actually thought for themselves. They wanted clients who did exactly what they were told and they had everything done for them. The tent had been put up, the food was cooked for them. Uh, they were just about, I think they just about packed their own rucksack and, and were carrying their own personal stuff. And so that is how it's evolved. And where we've got this crisis this year particularly, it's, I think the, it'd be, the, there'd been a slow build-up. So the bad weather early. So you had this mass of people waiting to go for it. And then you get this window of opportunity For a week or whatever. when the weather's good. And then everyone obviously wants to get up there as quickly as possible and, and get up there in that small window. And that's what's happened now. And the trouble is the South Coal, it's almost as big as a small football pitch. So you can actually, you know, you'd have 20, 30, 40 tents on the South Coal. But of course, once you're on that final leg up to the summit from the South Coal, there are various uh, log jam points, particularly the famous Hillary Step. Right. And when you've got, it's, a, it's like having a single track road with very, very few traffic passing places yeah. and traffic both ways. And that's where this tragedy happened.
Western, where you've got so many people going up, so many people coming down, that people were standing and waiting for two hours, three hours at a time. Now that has two danger points. One, you're getting very, very cold while you're waiting. Secondly, you really need to get to the top by about one o'clock in the afternoon. That's the, the guideline. Because of weather? Because No, so you need to get up to the top and you need to get back down ah. again. And so that if you have these delays, you're going to get to the top too late. You're going to get people actually getting the top really late, being overtaken by darkness, but also by exhaustion. And this is where you have yeah, the tragedy. deaths are on the descent. They, they, this year, they were on the descent this year because of these huge delays. Usually, they've been going up, or when, of course, in, as in 1996, there was a storm on Everest, and they, they they tried to grab it before the storm broke, and then in that storm, of course, a large number of people perished on the way up and on the way down. That was the Krakauer story. Yeah, the Krakauer story. Yeah. Of